Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for DockerCon 2015. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. This is day two of two days of coverage, wall to wall, DockerCon, John Furrier, with my co-host Jeff Frick with SiliconANGLE, and our next guest is Jason McGee, IBM Fellow, VP and CTO Cloud Foundation Services with IBM. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, good to be here. Um, great to see you. So, CTO, Fellow, that means you're a distinguished expert. That's right. That's IBM language. I, when you become a Fellow, <laughs> yeah. you've made it. IBM <laughs> speak, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a tenured professor. <laughs> That's right. um, you but can't normally, mess with me now. We have good, but you have good domain. We, have, we love the fells in the cube. I want yeah. you to get your t technical take. How real is Docker from a mainstream perspective? Obviously, the five here is solid. It's in all the conversations, whether you're at OpenStack, yep. Big Data, Watson Analytics, software developers, people talk about containers. What's your take on it uh, from, a, from an evolution standpoint, technically? Yeah, my take is we're right on the cusp of it being really real. You know, like I think, as I talked about a little bit this morning in the keynote, I think everybody over the last year has learned what it is. Everyone intends to use it, and we're right on that cusp where we're starting to deliver the capabilities needed to take it to production and to use it for real, right? So I think it's right yeah. there. You know, I think there's a little bit more to do. Um, a lot more to do. We had only one guy who said, I'm really using it in real production. Right, right. I mean, a little more to do to get us over the line where those things can start and yeah. people can really get going on production. But. I haven't talked to anybody in the last six months who isn't working on how does this affect me, how do I in factor in my architecture, and all of them want to go to production, absolutely. Yeah, I so mean, the conversations are elevated from tire kicking, POCs, to what's yes. the production use cases. Yes. how do I get there? How do I get there, which right. is the tipping point. Right, absolutely. All right, yeah. so you guys have a huge customer base, IBM, so you know one of the things that we're seeing in the software business is architectural shifts, and these happen once every few decades. Sure. You know, uh, mainframe, mini, these things, what's the big architectural game changer of the cloud that levels the playing field and or causes um, innovation disruption? Well, I think there's a couple things that are going on right now around cloud. So one is uh, microservices, right? And this idea that architecturally people are really starting not so much microservices about the technology, but about the culture change that's happening, right? People are really focused on like, how do I deliver a much higher velocity? And I think the combination of those ideas with cloud as a delivery platform, with technologies like Docker that start to fill in the kind of technical enablers to get there is really changing how people think about building applications. I think the other piece that's really pivotal right now in driving this whole adoption is this, uh, the whole notion of hybrid, right? That people really recognize that they're going to have to run stuff in on the cloud, on premise, yeah, yeah. that where they run it today isn't where they're going to run it next week or next year, and so they're looking for ways to kind of build that next generation of applications with enough flexibility built in to adapt. But it's time. not a mutually exclusive scenario. On premise, still going to be around for multiple yes, years. Absolutely. That's pretty clear. Cloud has got economics that you cannot deny. Right. So the question is, how do, what software runs on which, and and that's the big conversation. Like, I don't want to have a version of software from XYZ vendor, exactly. and I got another vendor over here, say it's IBM software, I'm running Amazon or something else, so this is kind of where the battleground is. Yes. For software portability, code, if you will. Right, and Explain I, that concept, because a lot of people aren't getting their heads around that. Yeah, so I think you're right. I think there's a couple of dimensions to what people have to think about to make this real. I mean, first is, um, as an application developer, I mean, I think the center point should be I'm building applications, yeah. and how do I move those applications? And how's the infrastructure that I choose, on-prem or off, support that? Um, you need a way, first and foremost, as a developer, to package up the code and deliver it in a way that doesn't have to change as I move it between cloud environments, different hypervisors, on-prem, off, whatever. And, and running on some sort of hardware at the end of the day, right? Right. Whether it's flash memory it's or flash somewhere, drive. Yeah. Right? Um, so, so that's where I think containers fits into the picture. The second piece I think is um, no software today is built completely self-contained you know, collection of components. In fact, one of the challenges I think the Docker community has is to open up their thinking around not everything is just a collection of containers. That you're going to have containers, you're going to have services on the cloud that you just call and use as APIs, yeah. you're going to have existing systems <laughs> that you go back and connect to. So how do you make those uh, services and APIs you're using available in a consistent way across on-premise and off-premise systems? And then the third piece is just 
Um, what's the delivery process around it? You know, how do you do DevOps? How do you do delivery yeah. and things like that? You got to get to some consistent model for how you deliver and what the people processes around delivering those things into these different environments. But you're right that we're not going to get, this is not like a temporary transition from state A to state B. You know, I think the only thing IT's taught us is nothing ever completely goes away. Yeah, yeah. All right, everything <laughs> adds to the past and you know, containers and microservices and all these things I think are the same. You know, how do yeah. we have them complement the things that we did before? Well, our Wikibon research team identified three areas that were that customers are interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of the speeds and feeds, they, they have different linguistics. They say, I have new apps I'm deploying, completely clean sheet of paper. Right. I have existing apps I got to modernize, yep. and I want to migrate stuff to the cloud. Right. Right. So it seems to be the top three conversations that we're hearing. Yes. Can you talk about the dynamics on those relative to the cloud? Because cloud will be an enabler on all three. Yeah. So because whether it's on-prem, existing, the software matters, right? So yes. I can't have cloud software running different. <laughs> so right. talk about that, those three dynamics. Yeah, so I, I think um, one of the ways that we've looked at that problem is to say really what you need is a platform that delivers across kind of a spectrum of delivery models. That you know, there's a real trap in thinking that one approach is going to solve all of those problems. And so you need a platform for that's rapid true. development, and that's where you know containers certainly plays a role there. What we've been doing around Cloud Foundry and that approach plays a role there. You have the modernization space. Um, you know, one of the things we've been working with our customers, for example, is how do you take uh, Java web sphere based applications and bring them into the cloud model? Sometimes that's of the shape of I want to kind of extract a set of services, do some refactoring, and, and modernize that application. Sometimes that's the third case, which is just I want to just lift up what I had, run it in the cloud. I don't want to change a lot about it. I realize I'm not going to get all the benefits, but what I am going to get is kind of cloud operational models. Right? Yeah, yeah. More elasticity, automated deployment, uh, more efficient resource management, so I get kind of cloud operations for existing things. And no one approach is the right one. It yeah. depends on what you're doing, and you want a single they can consistent coexist. platform. Technically, yeah, they should side coexist. Side. Yeah, right, absolutely. I mean, I want to move a workload into the cloud, I might, I don't want to have to do anything. Right. I should be able to just kind of just move it out there. Yeah. And, and that thing that I move might be sitting side by side with some brand new application I'm building and they have to talk to yeah. each other. So you want really a consistent platform. And I think that's you know yeah. one of the areas where the industry is still maturing and you have yeah. certain people are great off-premise infrastructure, other people are great on-prem, some have a good PaaS, but you really need that full spectrum if you really want to address the broader landscape of applications yeah. that people are dealing with. Right. Yeah. We're short on time, we got to go, uh, we got somebody waiting in the wings. All right, final question I got to ask, because we love talking to IBM, we had a yeah. great event uh, last week at Spark yeah, Summit. Spark, Spark, um, yeah. Great conversations, a lot of stuff going on in memory. Yeah. So there's a, final question, hardware, software, we're in a software-led infrastructure now, Yeah. and so software is the key, that's the value. Cloud is not a race to zero, because the value's shifting. Yes. Marginal economics still apply, yeah. if you do it right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, What's the deal with hardware's role in this software DevOps role? Because at, at a surface, you can extract away the hardware. Sure. Should it be optimized for performance? Oracle certainly says, hey, we have, we'll run Oracle up and down to the end to end, but not everyone has Oracle everywhere. So that kind of teases out what Amazon's shown to, end to end. So is there an end to end future where hardware uh, gets smarter? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the great mystery of the cloud, right? That <laughs> all this stuff actually runs on hardware somewhere, <laughs> and that hardware matters. Um, and I think there's a lot of, you know, I think maybe the balance is shifting where we're trying to build from the application down. And so you you want models where the application can be simple and portable, but where the optimization of the hardware can show through. I mean, a simple example, the, the container services we're doing on Bluemix are sitting on top of the bare metal capability that we're running in software. So we can actually get bare metal performance out of an application running in a container on the cloud without the developer having to kind of deal with the complexities of managing a bare metal system. So there's a nice balance there, but hardware and hardware optimization is going to play a role for the, yeah. you know, forever. Certainly the flash and in-memory stuff flash, is going to be. Flash, in-memory, processor yeah. upgrades, GPUs, all that stuff yeah. makes a huge difference. Be in So would you agree we're at the beginning of this front wave? I mean, just yeah. early days? Yes, I think so. I think we're at the beginning of kind of thinking through how do we now introduce hardware optimization ideas back into shared multi-tenant cloud yeah. environments, right? So there's going to be a before cloud and after cloud. You know, BC, <laughs> right, <laughs> we're one BC right, right now. Right. You know, <laughs> one a, certainly, yeah, hey, AC, see, after cloud. cloud. Some people yeah, think yeah. the cloud game yeah. is one, the cloud game's just started. It's there's totally so just much started. To but the numbers are clear. Amazon, Oracle had their first quarter, their quotes, cloud business, no matter what you believe, the numbers right. are coming out. You guys have, right, you guys are shifting 100% behind cloud. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. so good stuff, great right. stuff. Great to chat with you, thanks for sharing. Yeah, you Thanks, um, Mr. Cube, we'll be back with more live here in San Francisco right after this short break.